<laughs> it would appear <laughs> that my time has been shortened. <laughs> this is the one called Buddha. Oh, so nice. I was you. going to teach about the third eye in a little more depth today. However, I think my time has been shortened, and I don't know if I have time to do that. But let me say this. Many have conceptions about the third eye that may not be true. Oh, yes. It does have to do with clairvoyance and seeing the things that are beyond the realm of third dimension, it does have to do with seeing and, and creativity and the very idea of understanding all the things of spirit that you were once confounded by. As the third eye opens, your understanding of spirituality, the world, and all things are opened unto you, not just other dimensions and other, uh, other beyond senses, <coughs> but also the world that you live in becomes much more clear, becomes much more livable because you can understand it. And so therefore, when you are intending for the third eye to open, intend all these things, there's so many connections with the third eye, not just with the supernatural. <laughs> the supernatural is part of it, but not all of it. So therefore, make sure that you are looking at all the things that the third eye brings. All the things. Remember, it'll help you understand yourself as well. It also under gives you greater health. Why? Why is opening the third eye bringing health? Because it is an energy that comes from God. That the third eye is a natural energy that is part of all bodies. It comes from outside, it comes from inside, and it lightens up that, you see, the color of that chakra, what color is it? Indigo. What color is that? It is a deep, deep, dark blue. Deep, almost black. But as the third eye opens, it sheds a light on that, doesn't it? That is the eternity, the void, all the things that are, that come together to make that darkness or dark color. But yet, when the third eye opens to a certain point, it refuses to accept that it is only one color. <laughs> It is the culmination of all the colors before it. If you put them all together, <laughs> it's going to be a very dark color, is it not? But this color tells you that it is of a wise place. God is in the void. God is in the silence. God is in the nothing. There is no such thing as nothing because God is there. Think about that. People say nothing. There is nothing there. But that's not true because there is always something in the nothing. It could be the tiniest speck. But also God is there. Because <laughs> he is there for with everything at all times. I'm, I'm like getting sidetracked. But let me tell you, there is effects on the body when the third eye opens. There's definite effects. You're, you become lighter. Your 
endocrines, your there are so many systems. I I'm not even sure the name of them all in your in your vernacular, but I know that it is vast. And below the base of the neck, there is something there. Is it the hypothalamus? I think it is. And it is much affected. That is the word. Your hypothalamus. And the thalamus is below that, I believe. And these are affected. They open up different things for different people. They are part of your individuality. They are part of the collective individuality. They are part of the collective uh, system of energy. Does that make sense to you? I'm not going to get finished with this all today, I don't think. But let's continue. Is there any questions so far? Yes, there is. Sarah, would you like to go? Yes. yes. Hello, Buddha. Welcome. And much Thank welcome. you. I have a question about my third eye, and I'm actually happy you came today. Um, this week I experienced, I sort of saw myself opening my third eye, and there was some sort of vibrational wave coming out of it as I was yes. honing. Um, uh, the, uh, like a very deep sound. Ah, beautiful. Well, you know, the sound of the third eye is mm, that is the sound that opens the third eye. It is a toning sound. It's the mmm. Now, you've heard of the om. That is yes. the sound of the sun, the vibration of it. The, the sound the sun makes in the sky, in the, in the solar system. If you were to record the sound of the sun, it would be Aum. Aum. And how is it that ancient humans were able to detect that sound and know that it was of the sun. It is a gift when you are in tune, when the third eye is in tune with yourself and all those things around you. It is open to the universe and all the sounds that are in the universe and all the things that are in the universe and they could sense that. And is part of the ohm. You understand that? And yes, I understand why that happened to you because it is making you aware that this is universal. This is gigantic. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but what about the vibrational wave coming out of my third eye? That is part of the mmm. That vibration that's coming out is part of the sound, is part of all things. It will, that sound that comes out of the third eye will create the vibration of the room to be the same as it is coming out of the third eye. All those things will become the same. All that vibration in that room will be the same. Why? because it is connecting in a universal way to everything around it. Do you understand that? I'm getting it. Okay, so as I'm toning, I would be using my third eye at the same time? And yes, and that is wonderful. And let me tell you what that does. I have, I'm already starting to explain it to you. It okay. connects everything in the same vibration. Now, why is that important? It is because so that everyone can feel the same thing, can understand the same message, can heal with that vibration, if that is your intent. 
Why is the Om so beautiful? Why is the Mmm so beautiful? Is because it brings all into oneness with God. Ah, I get it. I've done that sound actually during my toning. I've done that sound. So thank you. Yeah. I, I have a clear idea of what it's uh, the purpose. It brings of it. everything into oneness. Yeah. And the third eye vibration brings yourself. It, it changes the vibration of self as well. Because you are in one place, and when the third eye speaks with its vibration, then it brings things into oneness. The whole body is at peace and is at one. Thank you for that. That's, that's lovely. You are welcome. Now let me tell you, that is the sound of the third eye, is the um, the um sound. So therefore, it is the vibration that brings things into oneness. Mm -hmm. Now, the third eye has elements all around that can help you to help it open. Do you, are you aware of this? Are you aware that jasmine is an odor that can help the third eye open? Jasmine is the scent for the third eye. What is the stone to use for the third eye? Well, for this day and age, it's amethyst. Mm -hmm. It also can be lapis. Mm -hmm. These things, these elements are one with the third eye. They have the vibration that will come into oneness with the third eye. Does that make sense to you? So these things have already been in tuned to your third eye vibration so that when you start to open your third eye and you have these things around you, it helps because they are helping. They are helping with you your intention, with your purification, with your love, with your understanding that all things in the universe, stones, odors, vibrations, planets. Jupiter is also the third eye's planet. Were you aware of that? Why is Jupiter the third eye's planet? It has a huge eye on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is not really the reason, but I always remembered it because of that. Mm -hmm. I can see the planet and see the big eye. But it, what I'm trying to say about it is that Jupiter, that if you would intend that it help you open your third eye, that planet is geared to the third eye. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know, but it is. God has made it that way. There's so many things and elements and thought processes connected to the third eye. Is there more questions? Yes. Come closer. Is the third eye to be open all the time, or is it um, just during times that you need it? No. The third eye is open gradually. It does not open fully for one moment to give you one thing and then close again. What happens with the third eye is that it starts to open with your the beginning of enlightenment. And as you learn and grow in spirit, love, understanding, the third eye grows open a little more and a little more and a little more. Now, will it ever be fully opened? If it is, you are one of the wisest and greatest people that ever lived because it is not to be opened entirely until probably the end of your life. But there are people with their eye, third eye wide open, and it was 
because of drug induction, psychological problems, things of this nature that were not quite natural for them to experience. I'm not sure I could go into that much further, but if you would look at a, a heroin addict, and there are machines that can look at the, the different chakras that you have nowadays. You will see that a heroin addict's third eye is all the way open. But does that help them? No. What it does is that they are living in, an, in a world that is horrific. They sense, see, feel everything that is beyond as well as everything that is within and everything that is around. You will find that some drug addicts whose third eye are all the way open are in extreme torture. Have you ever experienced anyone that is going through that? It is extreme torture. To open the third eye without the right guidance, without the right purity, understanding, and love, and without God's will to be part of it. Thank you, is there, Buddha. Uh, is there we a have question? a couple of... Yeah, I have a couple of questions from members. Um, yes. From member Slava says, uh, excuse him if uh, it's not appropriate question, but he wonders about your perspective. He would like to ask about remembering and consciousness memory. Could you please share your perspective on its aspects? I'm sure many of us have our own perspective why it's happening this way, but in your perspective, why would it happen in such a way at this time? Perhaps it's not appropriate time for us to remember specifically our visitations to the colonies or remember more about ourselves and share this world at this time. Is it God's will or our subconscious decision or someone else's impact? Um, he understands that it's a relative question in many ways, but how yes. do you see this from your perspective? I see this. This is a beautiful and wonderful question. I see that many aspects of it that he is looking at. He is looking at it from very, very many different angles. But let me say this. When the third eye opens and you start to understand who you are, and start to perceive who you are and start to understand the things around you and the things beyond it must come slowly it cannot all flood in it cannot be a huge flood of information so therefore you are given pieces bits and things and clues of the next step in your evolution of the third eye. Now, as it opens, you start to understand more. You start to remember more. You start to feel more. You start to see beyond more. So as you grow in the spirit, now there are times when the third eye goes back closed. Why? You fall into disbelief that God is helping. You fall into a third dimensional situation that smacks you so hard that you can't see beyond and and the third eye closes but it can be opened again but as it opens slowly and only slowly then you will start to get the information that you need start to remember the things that you need to remember and sometimes in this reality Third dimension, you, you do not want to remember everything. You do not want to experience everything. You do not want to know beyond a lot of things. And so therefore you are taken at a certain pace through the opening of the third eye so that you will become wise. If it opened too quickly, your wisdom would not be there. You would not understand what is happening, you would not perceive things correctly. Does that make sense to you? The perception is important. The way that you perceive and the way that it happen, happens are important, especially each of you are individuals, unique 
in your own special way and for you to rush that, it would not be a pretty thing. You can't go from 0 to 100 as far as living the human life without consequences. An accident for sure. Is there Thank any more questions? Does that yeah, answer your question? That answer does sufficiently for Slava, I believe. Um, Sam, Sam S. has a question uh, about a spiritual experience here. He says, um, his forehead had a lot of pressure last night, and I assume that he's talking about the third eye area. And he says yes. he felt very nauseous. Uh, then he said an overwhelming emotion came through, and he began to cry. And he's asking, was this part of his third eye trying to open, or was it something else? No, this was a release. This was a release of something that needed to fall away from him. And yes, it was part of the third eye opening. Let me explain. As we shed our negativities and our toxins and the things that do not belong within us, and the third eye can open a little bit more, yes. I ask him this, was there a great relief afterwards? Just find out for me. I don't know who it is. That but may take a little bit because he's not online in real time with us. It may take I a see. while. But I am sensing that after this experience, the nausea was the toxins. The pressure on the third eye was that these toxins were keeping the third eye static. Static meaning there are not openings still and after this wave of nausea, there was great tears and emotions and a falling away of these things that did not belong. He may not even be aware of what that was. But he has been looking spiritually for an, a greater experience in the spirit. And so that was something that was a step forward. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I just realized that Sam is here. I didn't <laughs> I didn't know that I didn't realize that. Sam, can you unmute and uh and speak? Yes, thanks, Dan. You hear did me? you feel did you feel a great relief after the tears? Yes, I did. That is because something fell away. Did, I, did you hear the explanation that I gave of what happened? Uh, yes, I did. Thank you. And did that, did you understand it, and did it make sense to you? Yes, it makes sense. There is something in your life that was burdening your, your entire life, actually, in, in, in your body, in some way. And whatever it was, finally you realized you didn't need it any longer, and it passed. Okay, I got it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha. That was a beautiful thing. And yes, your third eye did open more. Okay. Is there any other questions about that? I, uh, I sense that there is something else. Yeah, I have a lot of questions, but I'm a little uh, all choked up right now, so I, I can't really talk. Well. But I'll go ahead and pass on the mic. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Love you. Continue on your path. You are making progress. That was beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Buddha. Carolina has a little question here that she would like to know what is the wavelength of the ohm? The wavelength of the ohm, I do not know what it, how many megahertz or whatever it is that you are looking for, but it is when it comes out, when you do the ohm, when you experience it, when you create it, it is exactly the way it should be. So you do not have to worry about what, what its frequency is at that moment. You only have to worry about creating it, coming up out of the soul 
it will cause a great oneness to occur if you continue it long enough. And the more that you go, the longer that you go with the Om, the greater it extends out. It keeps, it puts that vibration on everything. That exact vibration becomes the intensity, the atmosphere of the room, of the place, of the walls and the ceilings and the floors, of the pictures on the wall, of all the people that are there, especially if they're ooming with you and sharing in with the vibration. But even if they don't share, it will come to them and it will seep through the surface of their being until they feel one with the room, one with the all. It's just a matter of time. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Dan? Yeah, I have a couple of more questions from members. Um, this one from John Lee. Um, she says it's her understanding from the oracle of Ephesus that we are to somehow unite your bowl of love within us with the Christ within us. Is this cool. so from your perspective and are her attempts to do so progressing? So she's asking is she connecting with her uh, her Christ within in uh, what she might consider a what they're saying is they're they're wanting you to take the physical and unite it with the spiritual. Yes, the Om does that. There are several different things to do that. The bowl of love is the physical love that you feel, the physical part of love. You feel the emotions. You you have touch. You have sensation. The bowl of fire, and that connected with the spirit, which is also a fire becomes a great flame. You can connect them together. Now, the soul and God are one. And that fire comes directly from God. We are, in this day and age, as you are experiencing, this is the new age of experiencing how God is. And this bowl of fire is the physical, and the soul is the, the spiritual. And yes, they can be connected. And your intention is important. And when you do connect them, there will be realizations about the physical and the spiritual. You will find that the spiritual speaks to you, your body, and your body speaks to your spiritual. And you, will, you are intensified in both. Does that make sense to you? Because yes. the flames have united, you see. The flames have united. If she has any more questions, I can uh, follow up with her and explain uh, more, more thoroughly. I am truly happy about these questions. They are making me happy. Come and speak. There is a person in the room that wants to speak. I have a, uh, you mentioned that people that did heroin experienced the opening, and I have a friend that was a former heroin user, and uh, she moved away, and I heard through spirit that she was experiencing psychological problems, and I'm wondering how would I be able to help her heal, send healing energy to her? What, in okay. what kind of way would I do this? Once someone is taken away from the drug, the third eye is still open, and it's causing a great amount of sensations to bombard the body, mind, soul, and spirit, because it's not from one place, it's from all places. It's coming from the earth, it's coming from third dimension, it's coming from beyond, because the third eye does control the, the experiences from beyond. It's from psychic energy as well, from the brain, and all these things. And so once the drug is removed, the, the psychological damage has already been done. The eye may start to close. 
slowly. But they must understand that they have to give up the information that they've received. Does that make sense to you? They have to, they have to take it away in the sense that it's not important at this time. But yet, whenever the third eye is open, everything seems important. All this information seems very, very important. And it, they have no choice but to see it. They have no choice. The third eye is all the way open, so the information is coming. But it seems so important. They can't give it up, and this is what causes the psychological problems to remain, is because they can't close it again. They, they, they have a difficulty not receiving. Do you understand that? Yeah. But if they could start to close it, if they could just block it in some way, and I'm not sure they do have some psychological blockers, some drugs in this day and age that does do these kind of things. But does it close the third eye? I am not sure. I have not experienced that, and I do not have that information right at the moment. Because I, all that I know is that once it's all the way open, it's so very difficult to close. Mm, Any more questions? You, so you know, I have a quick question, if I can. Yes. Um, my name is Valerie, and Valerie. I would like to know if anyone has the capability of being... Uh, or holding uh, the history of the Akashic Records. No one has enough space in their memory banks to hold the Akashic Records. You must understand what the Akashic Records are. They're every second, every planet, every part of everything that ever existed. That is... One second of information is too much for a human to hold in their brain. One second of the Akashic record will flow over and explode your brain because it is too much to hold. You are not made to hold the Akashic records or the memories thereof. It is there as a history of the universe and of all things at every moment and every bit of time. And you wouldn't want that anyway. There's too much information. And it cannot be used in this lifetime. Only okay. so much information can be used by your unique perspective and life. And your unique perspective of life has a purpose. And the Akashic Record has 20 billion, billion, trillion, trillion purposes. And you only have one. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would not be even advisable to do a second. And that makes sense. You understand that? Yes, I do. I love you dearly, but that kind of information is destructive. Yes, I can imagine. Um, also, I had another quick question here on yes. that same on that same uh, frequency. Um, if, nice. if this is there any way a person can revoke uh, any type of DNA things that would change their life now? Does that make sense? Like um, contracts, you mean, things like that. Uh, oh, let me ask you a question first. You see okay. if I understand the question. Do you mean after you've received some DNA, is there any way to get rid of it? Yes. Or do you mean, is there any way to, if it's someone wants to give it to you not to accept it? Yeah, both. Once you've received some DNA, it's difficult to get rid of it. It can be done. It can be done, but it is not an easy process. The other thing is, 
If there is DNA that someone wants to give you, you do not have to accept it. It's very easy. It's a matter of free will. All you have to say is no. It's not difficult. They cannot force it in. Unless they're doing an operation and cutting you open and put it, injecting DNA, but that is not happening. What is happening is you are, can only take the DNA if you accept it. If you do not want it, do not accept it. Because after you have it, it's difficult to get rid of. That's great to hear. And it's great information. Um, is there any way that a person can, uh, like, are you given contracts, so to speak, before you come to Earth? Are we all given contracts that we are? Uh, Ninety-nine point nine percent of people on Earth have a contract before they come here because they have made it, and there is a reason for that. And they have contracts for their future, and they want because they they continually want to learn and grow and become greater beings. You see, as as you progress through your different lifetimes. Your brain opens up more and more and more, and you become more godlike. But it's a progression because you, like, uh, it's a progression towards God. You'll never reach him because he's always learning more and creating more and doing more. But it is a progression toward a godlike existence. It's a beautiful thing. So there really would be no need to revoke any of those contracts then? Not unless it interfered with, well, no, there wouldn't be any. But there are some people that change their contracts for one reason or another. They're, they're tired of learning certain things a certain way. There are no negative things attached to those contracts, though. Is that correct? No, not. not. Once you make a contract, it's, it may seem negative once you're down here, like pain, sorrow, suffering. But when you're in the oversoul, it's not negative. It's a learning experience. It's let me feel that. Let me know that so that I can help somebody else with it. It's actually very positive. Well, that's wonderful. And again, very good information. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you, Buddha. Much love. And I'll pass the Much mic now love. to Dan. Dan. Buddha, I have a question about the third eye, the whole third eye experience thing. So for those people who who the third eye is just words, like they, they've heard of the third eye, they, they're not quite sure what it is, how it is, where, where it's located. So the third eye is like the pineal gland projection at the forehead. And then is there something that you can share with like the more lay people, the, the more beginner people of how they can really tap onto it, how they can really begin to use it in their favor, how they can really mm -hmm. begin to get things rolling and, and help them with their spiritual growth? Can you, can you maybe say something yes. to help those earlier folks? Well, let me tell you this. The third eye is never completely closed unless you're dead. It has to be open a slight bit for you to be able to perceive, to understand. It, you may not be going into beyond dimensions with the third eye being only open a small way, but you're perceiving third dimension. You're perceiving your life, your body, the way you perceive it at that time. With the, with the third eye just slightly open because it is the center of perception. It is what it is on the level of spirituality as well. If it's only open a little bit, you can only perceive so much spirituality. And some people believe that they're very spiritual, but their third eye is only open this much, and they're perceiving spirituality in such a small way. And even a small bit of spirituality is huge. You must understand that. To understand even the smallest bit of spirituality is lovely and beautiful. But to help them jumpstart their third eye is to know that it exists, number one. Without the knowledge that it exists, there's no way to open it. I mean, any farther than it's open. 
And after they believe that there is such thing as a third eye and that it can be opened, then you seek ways to open it. And that is a voyage for each person. No one takes the same voyage opening the third eye. Everyone has their own unique way to perceive their life and to make it better if they can. So therefore, I cannot give you a path except for to say, seek and you will find, which you've heard before. But it is true. But your ways of seeking, some people look in books and read different things. Some go to a guru and have readings. Some uh, pray and ask God. Some meditate. There's many, many ways to take your path. Some do very little about it. But they'll, they'll say, all right, I have a third eye. So what? What good is it doing me? I live here. I'm, I'm having an okay life, so why change anything? So there's another path to take, the path of indifference. But if it is... Your third eye, which it is, is open just that little bit. It's like opening a pistachio shell. Do you know, you see them, you see that there's something in there, but sometimes it's very difficult to get to it. Mm-hmm. You understand that? So, and other pistachios, it's easy. They just break right open. Depending on your belief systems, depending on how you want to perceive it. It can be a very difficult journey, or it can be a much easier journey. That's all up to you. Would it be simple enough to just say they could just give their third eye some attention, maybe give it a little focus, maybe get into a light meditative state, maybe do some om okay. or something? Could they just begin Whatever. giving it some attention, and then that could um, could blossom and grow into a, a really good connection as they feel their way through their third eye? Absolutely. Whatever they choose to do, whatever is exciting for them because if the path is not exciting it's not going to be taken if the path is too tedious then no one will will walk it okay so yes find something that interests them that is what I'm saying they must find their own spot of interest their own place to begin their own place where that says all right this is something I'm interested in something that might be very helpful. So it sounds like provided as long as they would give their third eye some focus, maybe make a little time for it, and then follow their inner guidance from there, then they should be well on their way to uh, growing into whatever they're going to be then. Depending on their belief systems, absolutely. Awesome, wonderful. I think that, that might do them quite well. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha, for helping me with those. It appears I had more time than I thought. Oh, yes, it's okay, Buddha. Um, Jeremy is a new member just joining with us today. Jeremy, would you have any questions? Would you like to unmute and speak? Yes. Yeah, I just want to know if my my guy who is basically what he he says he is, and if he's basically going to help me, to um, help me awaken the earth from the from the fake reality. I'm not sure I understood the question. Something about helping you is something going to help you. What what was going to help you? No, I'm saying is my gray say says who he who he says he is to be. His gray alien. He's got a gray alien being ah, that, uh, ah, that visits with him, and he wants to know if it's, uh, if it's uh, valid. One moment, please, and I will connect to that. Does he have a name? Yeah. And what is that name? 
I called him Zef, but his real name is is um uh, Elysium. Elysium or something. But I can't pronounce it. He's right. real. Huh? He's real. He's real. Sorry. He's okay. real. And he is there for your best interest. He is one of one of the type of greys called Elian Shondai Zendi. He's yeah. from that the Elia Shondai Zendi. They are helpful greys. And he does care about you. I am not sure of exactly what he wants to teach you, but he feels that you have a great purpose. And he is there to help you. Yeah. I just want to know if he, if he, if he says who, he's, you know, who he really is, basically. If he's... Who he says he is. Huh? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, there, there is a lot of noise coming from somewhere. Oh, it's just me walking around, sorry. Oh, that is all right. Not all graves are evil. There are good graves and there are bad graves and there are neutral graves. And Elia Shondai Zendi are one of the ones that have come into the area within the last, I would say, maybe eight months, seven months into yeah. your earthly atmosphere in a very big way. They were yeah. there before, but they were only in a very small number. Okay, um, I just, um, I'm supposed to hide them, this isn't right. I, I said I called from them. I cannot hear you over the noise. He said that, um, he said that basically my definition is to help me. Yes. But... I don't know what to help him. It says to help him wake everyone up because everyone's afraid of them and it's just to help them with that. But I don't know if it's, you know, true or if he's part yes. of something. Yes, he's there to help you and what he says is true. And um, there must be something about you that he really has connected to. Yeah. <laughs> it is a loud sound. I'm not sure what you're doing. Are Jeremy, there's some background noise. Yeah. There's so much oh. noise. Jeremy, oh, sorry. do the thing where you don't move your device around while you speak because we cannot hear your voice at all. Okay, sorry. Um, I just got a lot of family here at the moment. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I was just um. Yeah, but that's what that's what I want to know. And to if he's in present, if he's because well, it doesn't seem to show himself to to anyone. And I just want to know if he's just if he's um. That's all right. If he shows himself to you, has he shown himself to you, by the way? Um yeah, I drew pictures on my um my profile page. Ah, very interesting. Well, he is has shown himself to you then, and do not do not um push him away. He is a good friend. He's trying to be a good friend. But okay, he's not just, evil. Okay. Yeah, because that's the thing. That's the only thing I'm concerned about because I just feel really scared and I don't know what to trust. And I hear these no, stories he about... Is not evil. Okay. Yes, you've heard stories about bad greys. There are bad greys. Zeta greys, for the most part, there are some good Zeta greys, but they're rare. And there's some other greys that are not so good as well, but... The Eliashon Dai Zendi are very nice in some, in many senses, yes. They have their quirks, of course, but they are not evil. Is there any other questions? Thank you, Jeremy. We appreciate the questions you had asked and, and they were answered. Okay. I'm moving on now. I don't believe we do have any more questions for you, Buddha, unless there's any more Wait, in the room with you. Can you ask? Yeah. 
Yes. There's a one in the room here. Okay, that's good. Can we ask them? Is there, uh, is there anything that you can share with me that will help on my life path journey? Any guidance that will help me along? The one thing I can tell for everyone is to follow that that which resonates with you. Now, if you find that reading is the way that resonates with you to find truth, then do that. If you find that having readings and talking to those read others that have truth within them resonates with you, that is the way to go. For you, personally, I would say that you must find well, you, you have already find a, found a way that resonates with you very well. You speak to Yeshua. Yes. And Yeshua resonates with you very highly. And so he is helping you now. And if, if someone else, someone else may find Yeshua to be a very good help. Or they may find that I'm a good help. Or they may find that Confucius is a good help. Or they may find that the spirit of David is the good help. But whatever, whatever it is that resonates with you, the truth will resonate in you for yourself. The perfect connection to you and God must be found. If there is not a pure connection, then you will not be your true self in this life. Does that make sense to everyone? Is there any other questions? No, I don't believe we do have any more questions today, Buddha. If we could get a blessing maybe from you before you leave, that would be wonderful. Uh, I would be so happy to give you a blessing. Very, very happy to. Wonderful. We would really appreciate that today. One moment, please. Ah, there is so much light in the universe. But can it all be seen at once? No. Grab a hold of the God light. That is your portion, which is a great deal at this time. And hold tightly to it so that you may grow and be blessed. God wants no one to live a life of horror, ter terror, and trouble. However, there are contracts that do have some trouble in them. But there's still joy to be found, even within those troubled times. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of all the joy that you can find. I give you now a blessing from the past which reaches far into the future. May God be with you in his ultimate and omnipotent power. May his light always shine on you, even in those dark days where you feel that you can't even find him. Let your belief system know that he is still there. Find a moment every day to stop and thank him for the beauty that is around you or any one small bit of blessing that has been given. Always thank him every day. Bring your light in line with his light and find the love that is in line with his love and live a wonderful and gratifying life because even if you have trials and tribulations to go through, you still have a purpose for being here. Every single person has a purpose. May you all find it 
and live it to the greatest of your ability. May love guide you, light and God's infinite knowledge and wisdom be with you always. Amen. Mm, namaste. I will leave you now. Thank May you, you so all much. have a wonderful day. I'm so happy to have been here with you. Thank you so much, Buddha. Much love. See you again soon. Much love. Much love. Thank you.